Hi friends, I'm going to be going over um, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I was just reading it in my quiet time and I found really amazing things. Um, so I'm just going to get started um, here in uh, Jehoshaphat's prayer. I uh, underlined... This is Four, right here in uh, verse 4. Uh, uh, then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Um, and he assembled to seek help from the Lord. And all the cities came to seek, seek the Lord. And I wrote um, uh, how Jehoshaphat's prayer was very beautiful um, and his plea to God. Um, we are powerless. Here we go. I, um, I just wrote this there. It says we are, what verse is this? 12. Uh, we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So I really love that. So I wrote it on the side here. And then I wrote the king humbled himself before God. He was afraid and sought God. For he was uncertain of his future and his men's future. He proclaimed a fast throughout the land. Uh, and all cities of Judah came to seek God. Hi, Idly. Hi, friends. I am in Second Chronicles 20. I'm just going over my notes because I found some really, really great um, great things in this chapter and it just shows how amazing God is and then here a prophet comes to speak and he says listen all of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat thus says the Lord to you do not be afraid and do not be dismayed at this great horde for the battle is not yours but God's Tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they will come by the ascent uh, of Siz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Judah, O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them. And the Lord will be with you. So there's a lot in this little paragraph, which is amazing. Um, first, um, there was a prophet speaking to all of Judah. And he said, this is what the Lord says to you. So the Lord is speaking to them. That makes it so much special. And it says, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, twice. And it says, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And that is amazing. So I put it up here. Uh, the battle is not ours, but God's. Uh, he will fight for us and give us victory. That's what I wrote up there because that's amazing. Um, and then here I will list everything that is just blew my mind this chapter blew my mind today um so second thing that i noticed was you will not need to fight in this battle stand firm and hold your your position and see the salvation of the lord on your behalf so god works for us we just have to trust believe and love him my note is uh how the lord speaks with such love for his people not only is he giving them victory they don't even need to fight the battle it is God's battle not theirs we should give our battles to God he's the only one that can win them for us praise the Lord who grants us victories even though we don't deserve them because remember God gives us grace and we don't we don't deserve any of it and here I highlighted uh, verse 23. For the men of 
uh, Ammon, Ammon and Moab rose against the inhabitants of the Mount uh, Seir, uh, devoting them to their destruction. And here it says the Lord delivers Judah. Uh, when Judah came, this is verse 24, when Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked toward the horde and behold, there were dead bodies lying on the ground. Uh, none had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoil, they found among them in great numbers goods, clothing, and precious things, which they took for themselves until they could not carry no more. They, they were three days. Hi, Angie. They were three days in taking the spoil. It was so much. And the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berica, for they blessed the Lord. In verse 27, then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat at their head. Returning to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies. That is, that is amazing. And then verse 29, and the fear of God came on the kingdoms of the countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest all around. So let's break that down a little bit simpler because you know how I like to organize all of my notes. So here I wrote, God gave Judah victory because they sought him. So, goodness, they were victorious. They didn't have to fight. God orchestrated others to fight against each other until there were none left. Judah gets the spoil. Uh, gave them encouragement to not be afraid or dismayed gave them peace of mind, assured their future. Uh, God, God rewards us for our trust, belief, faith, and love we have for him. He is like no other. He gave them joy and made them rejoice over their enemies. God gave them peace and no more war. So I just, all that happened here and all that happened here, I just put it in um, like a study format, like a um, like a bullet point type of format, which is crazy. So first of all, because they sought God, they believed in him and they trusted in him when they didn't know what to do. So here he said, uh, King Jehoshaphat said, for we are powerless against the great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. This whole thing is amazing. You should read um, this chapter, which is uh, 2 Chronicles 20, and then um, see what you can come up with and we can compare notes. But this chapter, it just blew my mind. So because they didn't know what to do, they sought out God. And God, what he did was gave them victory, gave them reassur reassurance to not be afraid and not be dismayed, and they didn't even have to fight the fight to get the victory and even after that they would get the spoil of two different places which was completely amazing so god not only fights for us we don't have to do anything we just need to be still and let him fight and then we still get rewarded which is just that that's crazy to me because our god is like no other and he's so amazing and that just blew my mind um, so let me know your thoughts, um, because this just came to be so incredible to me. And the note that I have for, uh, verse 29 is, uh, that the fear of God was in all the kingdoms and countries around Judah. Um, I wrote here, the fear of the Lord came upon other kingdoms of countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against them. 
against the enemies of Israel. So I just wrote this here because that stood out to me. And also here, taking off my sticky notes so I could read it. Here is towards the end of the chapter, um, the end of Jehoshaphat's reign. So remember how he spoke here. I believe that he was speaking with such love, concern for um, Judah. He was saying, oh, Judah and Jerusalem. Like, I feel like he was with them, was for them and loved them. Here is the opposite because God, he needs to let us know that he's in control. When we've lost our way, you need to, we just need to, be still, hold fast to God because he's the one that's in control. He's the one that is going to do everything for us. So here in the end of Jehoshaphat's reign, uh, verse 35, after this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, joined with Ahazah, king of Israel, let's see, who acted wickedly. He joined him in building ships to go to Tarshish, and they built the ships in Ezion Geber. Then Eliezer, the son of these people, I can't pronounce, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have joined with Ahizah, the Lord will destroy what you have made. And the ships were wrecked and were not able to go to Tarshish. So as much as God loves us, as much as he is devoted to us and faithful and everything, he's going to punish us and he's going to let us know that he's in control. He's the boss. Only his will will be done. So we just need to remember that and that will keep us in his word. Uh, so my note on that is on... This little piece right here, 35 till the end of the chapter. Uh, don't, don't join with the wicked. God is always watching, no matter how much he loves us, which is immeasurable compared to our love for him. He will punish us to let us know who's really in control. You think you're getting away with doing evil deeds? My friend, I'm telling you that you're not. God sees and will judge according to his way. And here I continued the note. Uh, did he not bring judgment to his beloved and anointed ones? He will do the same to us as he did to Moses, David, and Solomon. So I didn't finish my note here because um, I had to come do this live. But I am going to add... Um, the references for when he judged Moses, when he judged David, and when he judged Solomon. Um, so I'll have those here and anything else I have to say about that. But um, that is all I have for today. I think it's a lot. Um, read this um, chapter, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, and let me know uh, some of your notes, what you thought, what you learned. Or any insight that you think you might have. And then we can compare notes. I would love to know what you guys thought. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you learned something. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.